Every day, we use paper without ever really thinking about it. Our super cameras will probe the magic behind this everyday item. The sharp blade cuts cleanly through the wood. Now, take a closer look at the blade. Huh, it's made of paper. Just how can a thin, floppy piece of paper cut through wood? Helping us find this out is a digital microscope. Let's take an even closer look at the same piece of paper. become as sharp as a regular saw blade and can cut easily through paper and will hang it in such a way so it's stretched equally in all directions. And to top it off, a man with a weight of 60 kilograms will hang from it. Lo and behold. The newspaper holds its own. A new challenger enters, weighing in at a whopping 116 kilograms. Absolutely incredible. As we can see, one sheet of newspaper holds enough strength to sustain over a hundred kilograms of weight. Just where does it get its strength from? In order to find out, we decided to make some paper ourselves. The white material, called pulp, is the basic ingredient of paper. It's fiber extracted from wood. First, pour the pulp into some water. About one millimeter of pulp spreads out evenly. Drain all the water at once. and the pulp gathers evenly on a net, forming a sheet. Because it contains moisture at this stage, it crumbles easily. However, if it's properly dried, voila, we have ourselves a solid sheet of paper. No adhesives are used to stick the fire together. So how is a sheet of wet fiber able to form into a smooth, sturdy sheet of paper just by being dry? When fiber from trees loses moisture, it has the ability to strongly gel with other fibers and form a solid shape. It is a condition known as hydrogen bonding, which occurs between the molecules of these fibers. A strong connection of fibers due to hydrogen bonding. That is the secret behind the strength of paper. Takayanagi, Niigata Prefecture.
Within this land, long renowned as the production area of Japanese paper, there is one house which catches our attention. The House of Light. Its walls are covered entirely in Japanese paper. Going inside, the floors and pillars, and even the beams are covered in Japanese paper. When the sun sets and darkness falls, it's as if a giant object of light is floating serenely on the water. The soft light created by Japanese paper envelopes the house. Just how is Japanese paper able to produce such beautiful light? Let's solve this mystery by taking a microscopic look at the paper. What look like white lines are the Japanese paper's fibers. Compared to Western paper, Japanese paper has a lower concentration of fibers. Because of the space in between the fibers, light that shines inside undergoes a diffused reflection and spreads out, thus creating soft light. Japanese paper, the creator of soft light, is indeed the right paper to use for the house of light. However, one concern of using Japanese paper to build houses is rain. Still, this house utilizes a time-honored object, helping to overcome the paper's weak resistance against rain. This is konyaku, otherwise known as devil's tongue jelly. Konyaku powder is melted with water and spread on the paper. It's said that just this simple process gives the paper strong rain resistance. However, at first glance, it doesn't seem all that different from the paper without the spread. If we were to pour water on both these sheets of paper, take a close look. The water is taking a much longer time to pass through the paper with konyaku spread than the paper without it. Let's take a look at this paper now through an electronic microscope. There seems to be a coat in between the fibers. There is a clear difference compared to the paper without the spread. The konyaku spread helped close the gaps between the fibers. This is what prevents water seepage through the paper. Having resolved the rain issue, the Japanese paper once